First things first, it is confession time. I totally misspoke at the end of the last video when we were looking at those console messages. I got it in my head. Oh, syslog's coming up next. For the syslog servers, they are not. We have an entire logging section starting with the next video where we will go over all of those scenarios, console logging, and then a syslog server, and then what you have to do to see the log messages via a telnet connection. That's all coming up in the next couple of videos. I wanted to talk to you for a moment, though, about services in general and one service, one more service in particular. We saw that huge list of services on, in the last video. And of course, they were created for our benefit. You know, they didn't start as a bad thing, but quite a few of those services can be used against us. And as you progress in your studies and you learn what more and more of these services do, you might say, well, I'll turn this one on. Uh, I'm not saying you necessarily shouldn't turn any of the services on, but do a little bit of research out there, Google a few terms, and take a look and see if there are any security vulnerabilities with the service that you're going to use. That's a great phrase to use in Google, by the way. You can use it, you don't have to give me any money. Just put whatever service you're gonna put in and then security vulnerability and see if there are any problems. Because the finger service, for one, uh, that was in the list. And it, it is used, really, to get the username and addresses of users who tell net to our router. And that's information we might want and that we can access, but the problem is when you open that service up, Intruders might be able to access that information either. It's probably something we don't want. I'm sure you're familiar with the denial of service attack. And if you're not, that's really just what it sounds like. There are different ways of launching a DOS attack where a legitimate server cannot respond to legitimate requests because it's so busy handling, frankly, illegitimate requests, ones that intruders are sending. And a couple of services that we have in that list can actually be used as part of a DOS attack. Um, the three small servers, or the three servers, UDP small, TCP small, and IP boot P server service, all of those services can lead to trouble. So again, I'm not saying you should never turn another service on in your life, but I will say do a little research first, look it up, use that term security vulnerability, and then just put in whatever service you're looking at turning on because that's the kind of thing you want to find out before you turn it on instead of finding out the hard way later on. But I tell you one service that helps to increase the peace, and that is the password encryption service. Now, we know from earlier labs that all passwords in a Cisco config are going to dis be displayed in clear text, with the exception of the enable secret, which kind of blows the quiz I was going to give you here. But here on Router 1, a lot going on, I admit, but I did that for you on purpose because I want you to get used to seeing a crowded window as well. And you can see about six lines down what I did. I set an enable password. I set an enable secret. I set a username password combination, creating a database technically. Then I went to the console port, put the password of CSENT on, and then I went to the VTY lines or Telnet lines and put the password football on. So, and I'm sure that you noticed something in that list, right? What I've got in front of you right now. I didn't enter CCNA as an enable password, I just put CNA. Watch that kind of thing, especially in a lab. We are so used to just putting you know, Cisco-related terms or your favorite football teams or whatever. Just eyeball them again because, of course, if someone's entering the enable password CCNA and or the enable secret CCNA, if that's what I'd set it to, uh, and instead it's been set to CNA, obviously there's going to be a small problem. Now, when I run show run, what do I expect to see? Well, here's what I see at the very top to begin with. Whoops, one button pushed too far. There we go. So the enable secret, I've got the number five, and then I have all these characters. That password has been hashed, and it's a form of encryption, and it's been done by the Message Digest 5 protocol, or MD5. And you can tell that anytime you actually see the number five. And the only reason we're seeing it here with enable secret is that that one is done by default. That one's encrypted by default. Now, enable password, my enable password of CNA is just sitting there in clear text. Here's username Chris, password zero, Bryant zero, indicating that no encryption's been done. And we go down to the bottom here, let's have a look. There's my console password of CSENT just sitting there. There's my password, my Telnet password, football, just sitting there. And that's probably not something we want. So what we can do is run that password encryption service. And let's just go ahead and do that. Take a look at the options here. Here's that full list again in case you needed to see it. 
and there's that um, sometimes iOS help is not helpful. You know, here's finger and it's allow responses to finger requests. <laughs> well, okay, that doesn't really tell me a whole lot, but we know that's one we don't want to just turn on for fun. And let's do password encryption and see what our options are. Hey, there aren't any. That's the thing with a lot of services. There aren't any options. You're either turning them on or turning them off. So I will take that and there's our control Z and now I'll do a show run. And what will happen now when I have pre-entered passwords, if you will, I have passwords that I entered before I ran the service. Will it go back and encrypt all the passwords in that config? Hmm. You may never thought about it that way. Let's see. It sure did. Look at that enable password right under the enable secret. And I know I don't need to tell you this, but that's what some people run into. They'll see enable password and they'll kind of skip over that and go, oh, that's the password 01302825. No, it's not. It is the encrypted version of the password. If we try to enter 01302825 for the enable password, it will not work. Note this seven here. And I believe we're going to see that with every other password here. This means it's encrypted, but it's the lowest level of encryption. And to be blunt, very, very blunt here, uh, this encryption can be broken by a program you can find out on the net very easily. You can find it in about a minute and probably crack these passwords in about 30 seconds. So uh, I'm not saying that's your homework assignment because it's not, but if you want to go out and look for such programs, you can. Just don't use them for ill will. But that's why you see that 7 there. It's the level of encryption, and it's a very, very low level. Uh, this, this helps to defeat what we call the over-the-shoulder network attack, and that sounds kind of sarcastic. Maybe in a way it is. But people have seen passwords they're not supposed to see because they looked over the shoulder of the person working on a console uh, inadvertently or advertently, and they saw the password. I've been there. I've, I've been behind somebody or with someone who was working on something, and you know, you just look over and there are all their passwords sitting in clear text. Thankfully, this was a while back. So we've got our enable password there. What about our other ones? There's username Chris password. Now the number is seven, where we saw zero a moment ago. And you see the hashed password. And let's go on down. And you can see that the ones at the bottom here as well the passwords have been encrypted, so we're in good shape there. Again, it's not exactly the strongest encryption ever. It's more like the weakest, but it's still better than nothing. No one's going to look over your shoulder and say, okay, now I know how to tone that into their router, because that used to happen more often than you'd think. Now, we've seen what happens when you've got passwords on the router, you enable the service, the service will go back and encrypt all of those passwords. We know that. What if we turn the service off? How can we de-encrypt these passwords? How can we run that backwards, so to speak? Well, let's try no service password encryption. And by golly, those passwords are still encrypted. And you can see, actually, since we talked about the enable password, I can look at that, 01302825, nothing changed. Here's the thing, you can't run this encryption backwards. You can't unencrypt it by running the no service password encryption command. So you can see the username Chris password, that one is still encrypted, and so are these. Now what I can do is overwrite the current ones. So if I wanted to go back and set the enable password to CCNA now, what would happen? Would it show up encrypted or unencrypted? Let's find out. And I'm sure you've already got the answer to this, but I'll show you anyway. And there it is, your enable password is CCNA. So again, very important to understand about this service. When you turn it off, future passwords will not be encrypted. That makes sense. But the passwords that have already been encrypted to level 7 by service password encryption being on, they are not going to unencrypt. Okay, so that is the most important thing really about service password encryption. It's not the strongest encryption. It's better than nothing, which is just about all we can say for it. But again, you can't really reverse it, but you can overwrite those passwords. Now, we are done with services for now. We're going to go back and head back into our main syslog discussion. We'll go back and look at console logging and talk about the command that goes with that and those severity levels, and then we'll just take it from there. So I'll see you on the next vid.